when we decided what to name the award that the Newhouse Sports Media Center would give out, it didn't take a whole lot of deliberation. It's pretty obvious right away. The right thing to call it is the Marty Glickman Award. To present the first Newhouse Sports Media Center Marty Glickman Award. Once again, Marv Albert, please come on up. John, thanks again. And this is really a, a great pleasure uh, for me. First of all, the Newhouse Sports Media Center has established itself as uh, the gold standard, be it uh, sports broadcasters, uh, producers, directors, executives, print, online journalists. And from the uh, sportscasting point of view, it all began with Marty Glickman. Uh, he paved the way. He influenced so many of us, including a kid who uh, grew up in Comac, Long Island, made his way through Newhouse at uh, Syracuse University, and then to enormous uh, success, primarily with NBC Sports and HBO and uh, the MLB Network and his baseball work. And aside from his work as a premier sportscaster. He has given generously uh, to many causes, including his alma mater. And uh, like uh, Marty Glickman, he has always been willing to uh, mentor and give advice uh, to young sportscasters looking to get that big break. And as a broadcaster, as you're all familiar with, Bob has never shied away from uh, the tough questions and of most significance. His career has been all about grace and eloquence. And I should all mention, also mention that at a moment's notice, he can give you, and you can just ask him in a moment, uh, 15 minutes on the pros and cons of the DH <laughs> or um, interleague baseball, if you like. <laughs> Bob, Bob is always ready to go. <laughs> and as uh, we touched on earlier, in my opinion, he is the best studio host in the history of sports television and he is the first ever winner of the marty my friend bob costas thank you mark thank you <laughs> right that's right thank you marv thank you everyone you know marv uh is a worthy protege of Marty Glickman. Um, there have been many great moments in sports broadcasting, and Marv has authored a good number of them himself. Willis Reed walking out onto the floor in 1970 in that dramatic moment in the seventh game against the Lakers. Oh, a spectacular move by Michael Jordan in game one, I guess, in 1991 against uh, the Lakers in Chicago, switching from the right hand to the left, and you think about all the, the great moments in sportscasting history, Al Michaels, Do You Believe in Miracles, Jim McKay's work in 72 in Munich, Russ Hodges, the Giants win the pennant, the Giants win the pennant, Vin Scully's perfect call of Sandy Koufax's perfect game. But for my money, somewhere on the list has to be the following moment, and Marv knows how I feel about this moment, just humbled to be in his presence every time I recall it. The Knicks are playing the Bulls around 1992 or 93 in the NBA playoffs. And there's a Saturday matinee game. And we come out of a commercial, and I'm in the studio, and Marv is doing the game with Mike Fratello. And we come out of a commercial, and they have a shot in the background. It's the marquee of Madison Square Garden. It says, 1 p.m., Knicks versus Bulls, game four. In the foreground, there's a bulldog on a leash. And all you see are, is the master's legs from, like, the knee down. The bulldog is on a leash. But the bulldog is wearing a blue blazer, has an ascot, sunglasses, a beret, and here's the topper. There's a cigarette in the mouth of the bulldog. So now the cameras move away from that and into a wide shot of the packed garden and Marv lets a couple of seconds go by and then says, Mike, always so troubling when a dog smokes. <laughs> and, and as a broadcaster, you just stand back in awe. A moment like that. 
And I'll tell you at a moment like this. <laughs> That's what it's all about, as, as, as Marv said, grace. And obviously, Syracuse University, which has a substantial endowment, spared no expense in the structure of this fine podium. Nothing like some slapstick when a man is attempting to be sincere, but what this represents to me, a number of things, it represents my childhood. I nudged my wife, Jill, when there was a little bit of footage from the 1962 championship game at Yankee Stadium against the Packers. My dad took me to that game. It was about the coldest I've ever been in my entire life. The wind whistling through that three-tiered stadium and wreaking havoc with Y.A. Tittle's passes. To this day, I believe the Giants would have won the game had it, the conditions been more favorable. And as the triple reverse play from 1967 against the Steelers popped up on the screen, I recalled Marty's call word for word. That's like a play the kids make up on a schoolyard or in their backyard, and you could feel his own boyish enthusiasm. So it represents a good chunk of my childhood and the inspiration for the university where I wound up. Marty's university, Marv's university, my university. So it represents my university as well. It represents my profession, of which Marty was one of the greatest practitioners. And it represents one of the most cherished friendships of my life because of how good Marty was to me as he was to so many. And by connection, so many other friendships, other faces around this room that are connected to the university, connected to Marty, connected to our shared profession. This represents a good portion of my life, and therefore, it's one of the great honors of my life. Thank you.